What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So, I haven't posted on this channel for a long time. It's been actually a couple months and there's a reason why. Um, so some of you guys already know what happened, but back in January when I was at SHOT Show in Las Vegas, um, if you don't know, this channel used to be my pew, pew, pew channel, my pew pew channel, right? Posted all my SHOT Show videos here and a bunch of pew pew reviews and stuff. Probably up to, I think, almost like 10 years worth of videos were all posted right here. And something happened in January of 2023. I don't know what, what happened, what it was. But somebody at YouTube went on the warpath and was just striking pew pew channels like you would not believe. And uh, it was pretty popular. Everybody knows about it. A lot of the big YouTubers got hit too, like, you know, um, Demolition Ranch who has 10 million subscribers. You know, all the big YouTubers, they all got hit. Of course, they've had, they have resources and connections, and uh, they made it through. They made their adjustments, and you couldn't do this, and you couldn't do that, and you couldn't insert a mag, you can't put a suppression on, all this stuff, whatever. Um, they followed the rules, and they survived, right? And they're still playing along, doing videos and stuff, but they have to follow these strict rules. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm done with it. I'm not going to follow those rules. It, for one, it's just too hard. I don't, I, too hard. I don't have the energy to do all this, to try to keep up. And again, what if I keep up today and I follow the rules and I don't put 30 round mags and I don't screw on cans and stuff like that and whatever. I, I follow the rules today, but then they change the rules six months from now. They change the rules a year from now. Now I, now I have to go back and edit all my videos and just like, I don't have time for that, right? And uh, I get it. You know, you shouldn't give up and like fight the good fight. But you know what? I have other things going on. I have a full-time day job. I got a wife and three kids. I got other YouTube channels that I'm working on. I just don't have the energy to go and just monitor and just try to keep that this channel alive because they keep changing the rules on me, right? I, I can't do it or I don't want to do it. So I've decided to essentially um, make this channel long, no longer a pew pew channel, right? I'm not going to do it, right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to post here. I'll post on Rumble. And you guys have been super supportive going over to Rumble. I put links below all my videos saying, hey, go to Rumble if you want to see the pew, pew stuff. And you guys have been doing a fantastic job doing that on my main channel. Um, so Rumble is where it's at, right? Um, well, at least where I'm at. Uh, I know there's guys going everywhere. I don't know. There's so many different options. But I, I chose Rumble. And I don't do it for the money because there is no money. Um, I think I make a penny. I looked at the analytics <laughs> and it showed that I made a penny. Woohoo! a penny, right? I didn't get into this to make money anyway, right? It just happened after the fact. I got into YouTube because, because it was fun. And then the money came later. So um, the, the upside to that was I could buy my, uh, you know, buy my hotels and pay my car, the car bills and, and gas and pl plane tickets to, you know, um, events and buy pew pews and ammo and magazines and gear. And I could use that money to make even more better videos, right? Uh, but uh, all that's gone now. So now it just comes straight out of my pocket. Yeah, if you want to watch the free stuff over at Rumble, the pew pew stuff at Rumble, go for it. I'm not doing Patreon. I'm not going to be like, hey, give me some money. Give me some money. Uh, as much as I want to, um, companies aren't giving me money to, to do the videos, even though that's where everyone's going now. Everybody's going that route to get these sponsors. I don't, I don't have the the energy to try to ask these companies to send me money to make videos. So that's where we're at, guys. This channel is no longer a pew pew channel. So now let's get into the introduction to what I'm going to do with this channel. So I think this channel has like 8,000 subscribers, which is, you know, small potatoes in the grand scheme of YouTube, but that's a lot to me. Like I have 8,000 people that are watching this channel. That's awesome, right? So I want to officially let you guys know that this channel is going to be more of a talking head channel. Uh, what I mean by that is my head will be here talking to you guys about the world, you know, um, topics that are popping up, news, um, events, things that happen that just, just make me go, hey, let's talk about this. So I'm going to just do that with this channel. I, I don't know if that's the right direction, but that's what I'm going to do. So when something happens in the world, something happens in America, something happens in another country, uh, that I think that I have some insight or some opinions about it. I'm going to come here and talk about it to you guys, right? So um, the the big thing right now, I mean, there's a lot of big things going on right now, right, with the world, 
war in Europe, war in, in the Pacific, you know, in Taiwan, possibly, and, you know, banks collapsing and economic strife and all this stuff and Donald Trump and all this stuff. It's just like, oh, there's so many things to talk about. But today we're going to talk about something kind of cool just so we can get this channel rolling, right? Let's talk about investing in silver. Um, so the other day, uh, I went over to my local coin shop in Carson City, Nevada. It's called uh, Northern Nevada Coin, I believe it's called, right there on Carson Street, across from the uh, the museum. And I went in there and talked to a guy named Mike, and uh, I said, "Hey, I got some money. I got a little, I got a little cash saved up. Uh, it's tax time. I got a little extra money laying around from tax returns, right? I think I think I made like, I think I got like four thousand bucks, five thousand bucks back in tax returns. So I got a little bit of money left over." Um, because I have a small business and some tax write-offs. By the way, you should do that. Um, the easiest way to get tax write-offs is to start a YouTube channel and start writing some things off and start a YouTube business, right? It's so easy. Uh, but anyway, I had a little money and I was like, you know, let me um, invest in some silver. A uh, little backstory on my silver knowledge. I'm not an expert, but I've, I've been studying gold and silver for years. Um, as a matter of fact, I bought this book here. Michael Maloney's book called The Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver. I bought this book over a decade ago. So I do have some knowledge on it and I do have some experience buying. I, I had um, a couple thousand dollars in silver way back in the day, probably a decade ago when I used to live in Las Vegas. And uh, I kind of fell out of it and just lost interest and sold the silver for a profit to a friend of mine who's like, hey, I'm into silver. So I made a nice big chunk of profit off of that silver, which I shouldn't have done that. I should have just kept it. Right, because I didn't really need the money. I take it back. I think back then I did need the money, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I stacked silver back in the day and I got out of it. But um, now, fast forward to 2023, uh, the world is a different place. There's crazy things going on in the world. Banks are collapsing, and um, I want to get back into um, a little bit of diversification. Right? I don't think gold and silver is the only answer and it's not a get rich quick kind of scheme you don't get rich stacking gold and silver uh, if you don't know um, collecting or stacking stacking gold and silver is just a way to preserve what you have so if you have a little bit of wealth if you convert the paper fiat money into gold and silver you can preserve that wealth when things go crazy in the world right it's not a way to buy it and wait for it to grow and then sell it when it's you know high it's not like real estate um, at least in my opinion, anyways, that's my opinion. You don't get rich stacking gold and silver. Uh, I have some silver here. I got 15 rounds right now and I'm going to buy more because, you know, again, like I said, I got a little bit of cash from my tax returns and some other things I got going on. So I got a little bit of, a little bit of wealth to uh, convert from paper to um, gold and silver. And I'm going to do that. So I wanted to share this little journey with you guys since I'm getting back into it, right? And this is kind of cool. Look at this. I mean, um, there's a cool factor for sure holding silver, right? Or holding gold or holding precious metals. There's just a cool factor holding wealth. The same metals that Jesus had back in the day. You know, that's, that's what you have here, right? And... Uh, so what I wanted to talk to you guys about was they're like, you're like, hey, make slip, you know, that's cool. I want to do that too, but I don't know anything about it. Where do I start? So here's my opinion. There's there's three types of people, and there's different types of silver that those three types of people should invest in, right? So let's talk about the very first reason why you should do this, right? First of all, should you even invest in silver or gold? And the answer is, heck yeah, you should, right? If you have a little money in the bank, like let's just use the round numbers, right? I'm just going to pick random numbers out of the air. But say you have $10,000 in the bank. This is just extra money that you never touch. It's like in a savings or whatever. And you just have $10,000 sitting in the bank. Well, if you think about the world today with um, um, Silicon Valley Bank collapsing and uh, SIG, uh, Signature Bank in New York collapsing and who knows how many other smaller banks um, collapsing. What do you think that's doing to the uh, confidence of people's deposits in their banks, right? Ooh, my money, is it going to be there? Am I going to be able to go to the bank? Is it going to be open? Is the ATM going to work when I put my card in? And am I going to be able to get that $10,000 out, 
right? I'm not saying you should go take your money out, right? I'm not saying that. I'm not a fear monger. I'm just saying um, your money's sitting in a bank, your paper money sitting in a bank, uh, and there's that risk that who knows if that your bank's going to make it, right? On top of that, um, the world is crazy, right? We got war in Ukraine. We got potential war in Taiwan and China. That's a two-front war. That's not good, guys. The economy, the stock market's already going crazy, and inflation is already starting because we're sending billions of dollars to Ukraine. We're at, I think we're at like $100 billion now that we've sent to Ukraine. And where do you think that money comes from? I mean, it's just not sitting around in someone's backyard. They have to, there's a big old machine in D.C. at the U.S. Mint or wherever it is. And they're printing money. They're printing it. And that means the, again, I'm not an economist, but I'm just saying, if there's more paper money out in the world, that's going to devalue that dollar. The same, that one dollar that you have is getting less valuable by the day every time they print more and more money, right? So... Again, on the topic of silver and gold, if you had $10,000 in silver, right, in a safe or safety deposit box, I wouldn't put it in a safety deposit box, but if you had it at your house in a safe, you have $10,000 in silver or $10,000 in gold, right, versus that paper money out there at the bank, um, what do you think is safer? What do you think is going to still hold its value, $10,000 in value, six months from now? When the dollar starts going down, when the world starts getting off the U.S. dollar as its, you know, it, its standard for trade, for oil and commodities and things like that. What do you think is going to hold its value? Gold and silver will. So that being said, this is a safer place to hold your value is in gold and silver. When the world's going up and down like this, whenever it settles out, when it's all, when the dust settles, your gold and your silver will still be there. Hopefully, if no one steals it from you, uh, if you have it, you can exchange it if the world's back to normal, of course. You go to a, co a coin shop, not a pawn shop, trade your silver back in. Ten years from now, that silver is going to be worth more. The spot price of silver will be worth more. So there you go. You preserved your wealth versus if you had $10,000 in paper, you could burn it. And a paper can get burnt um, if there's a flood or you had to go on a boat and it gets wet, it could get damaged that way. It's just harder to to uh, preserve paper money. And on top of that, the paper money is not even backed by anything. It's just fiat. It's fake. And we haven't been the dollar hasn't been a certificate for trade since the 70s. I think what was it? 71. Leave a comment below when the exact date was. I think it was 71 when they took us off the gold standard. So you're better off holding actual real silver and gold. Right. So that's reason number one to even start stacking if you didn't already know. The Fed is raising the uh, the rates, right? I mean, that's not good. When I bought my house in 2019 up here in, uh, you know, the Reno area, um, my APR was like 3.9. You try to buy a house today in 2023, just fast forward three years, and buying a house, you're lucky to get a loan with an APR, I think it was like, it's north of 7% now. It's crazy. So that's not good, guys. That's not good. Inflation is here. If you don't think inflation is already hitting us, it's already here. Um, go to a fast food place and, and go buy a Big Mac combo, right? A Big Mac combo, just burger, uh, fries, and a Coke is going to cost you over $10 for a burger, fries, and Coke at, at, the, at a fast food place. Are you kidding me? That's insane. If that's not a, a red flag that inflation is here, I don't know what is, man. Because it used to be five bucks. You could get a, a whole meal for five bucks. Now, you, now you're screwed. <laughs> it's just, it sucks. It sucks. A lot of people, a lot of people are talking about um, the dollar being devalued. So again, I don't know what you guys know and what you guys think, but China went to Russia. They signed a bunch of contracts and deals. And uh, the theory is that they're, go they're collaborating together to trade their own dollars between each other. So the oil that they buy, they're not going to buy it with American dollars. They're going to trade with the yuan or the Russian, what is it, the ruble or whatever that Russia has. They're going to use another form of, of trading billions of dollars, but not U.S. dollars. And that's going to try to destabilize the U.S. and basically destroy the U.S. 
right? And you think China and Russia are the only ones? No, there's a whole BRICS nation thing if you Google it, right? Um, uh, Brazil, India, there's a bunch of countries that want to trade using their money for oil and their money for commodities like wheat and rice and all these other things, right? And when that happens, if that happens, it's going to get ugly, guys, because the dollar is going to go, it's going to go down, right? And when that paper, that $10,000 starts becoming less valuable, it's going to take $10 to buy a loaf of bread, all right? Basically, your money is becoming nothing versus $10,000 in gold and silver, you'll still have $10,000 of whatever world currency we're going to use at the time. I hate to say this, and I'm joking, but um, you'll have $10,000 in gold and silver, and you can go and trade it in for $10,000 of whatever, yuan or rubles or whatever it is, right? Uh, because the dollar won't be worth anything, right? Again, I'm joking. I hope that never happens. Just, be an, if that happens, it's going to be an absolute nightmare. But um, again, one more reason to stack silver and gold. I'm not saying it's the answer to everything. Um, there's people that like to invest in Bitcoin. Oh, Bitcoin, you know, that's, that's the future, digital. But um, me personally, and Canadian Pepper talked about this in a video, I am not, first off, I'm not young, right? Young people have faith in Bitcoin and all this stuff, and it's the future. But if I can't physically hold it in my hands, then I don't want it, right? I don't want it because think about the digital world. What if the lights turn off right now? EMP attack, right? I got a book right here called Lights Out um, by David Crawford. Read this book. It's about an EMP attack and how these people, um, it goes list, down, down the list of things that don't work and how they had to survive in an EMP world, an uh, EMP attack um, world. That um, link will be below the video, by the way, if you want to buy it on Amazon. Little side hustle, right? Selling stuff on Amazon, but um, but yeah, it, I I don't like the digital stuff. I like physical stuff, right? So, whatever. Leave a comment below if you um, believe Bitcoin is better than silver and gold. All right. So now let's get into the three types of people that should be buying and what kind of silver and gold they should be buying, right? So. Again, this is just my opinion. I'm not an expert by any means. There's guys out there that do this for a living on YouTube and professionals that do this. But just in my own experience and research, you know, um, like I said, I've, I've read uh, this book here by Michael Maloney, um, Investing in Gold and Silver, over a decade ago. Uh, by the way, this is endorsed by Robert Kiyosaki. He's from Hawaii. He's a very rich guy, smart guy. But anyway, uh, the first type of people, the group of people that should buy silver and the type of silver they should buy or gold and silver they should buy, um, like preppers, right? So prepper, I consider myself a prepper as well. Um, I've been prepping for probably over a decade now. And uh, I think preppers, like if you're a prepper and you are like, look, um, my neighborhood is going to uh, exchange with each other and it's going to be like tribes, you know, trading with each other and you'll be buying with silver, buying with gold, right? I need bread. I need um, cases of this. I need gunpowder. I need sacks of rice, whatever. Um, I think preppers, at least the beginning prepper anyway, I think you would do really well if you bought, like, say, junk silver. If you don't know what junk silver is, that's basically regular American coins, you know, quarters, half dollars, right? But it's minted and printed by the U.S. Mint, right? So it's real American money. It's a quarter, it's a half dollar, it's a penny, it's a nickel, but it's made by American mints, right? But back in the old days, I think pre-63 or something like that, they were 80 to 90% silver. So you could literally have that coin, give it to somebody and say, I wanna buy you know, that loaf of bread. And they'll go, oh yeah, this is a 1955 quarter that has 90% silver. Yeah, I'll take that. And they verify it right there in the field. No special tools or, or chemicals to, to see if it's real. And, and no one ever counterfeits those things anyways. And then you can buy that loaf of bread or that sack of potatoes or whatever with American coins, right? And if you have thousands of dollars in America, those American coins that are 90% silver, you got some value there just in the content of the silver alone on top of the stamp that it was legit 
you know, minted by the American government, if we're still around to even be, it wouldn't even matter if the American government was around, right? Like if there was a collapse, because um, it's still a coin and it's still was printed and it's not fake. That's the whole point. The whole point of it is not fake. It's a U.S. Mint, minted coin with 90% silver. Boom, here you go. Let me have that bag of potatoes. So I think that's good. And it's already divided into small denominations, nickels, dimes, quarters, half dollars, dollars, things like that, right? It's already divided up. So if you had $10,000 in junk coins, I think that's still a good investment. And could you trade that in um, when the times come back to being normal? Regular good times like, like today, you could still get your money back to a certain degree, all right? A big chunk of that money back because the face value is still there too as far as being American currency on top of the 90% silver value. So I think that's a good route to go. And maybe even um, these as well, these silver rounds that are just a generic, no-name silver coins, one-ounce coins. I think that's a, a good... Uh, a good investment too for a prepper as well, right? Because they're still relatively small and portable and the denominations can still be used to trade, right? It's just, these are harder to verify if they're real or not because it's not made by US Mint. These are just generic. Uh, there's probably dozens of mints that make these things. Um, I do agree that the Buffalo with the Indian head is a good one to start with though because um, these are very popular and you know, thousands and thousands of thousands of these are out there and they're trusted, right? So that's the first group, right? Preppers should probably start off with junk, silver, 90% American minted coins, right? So the next group would be people today, right? Um, regular Joe, blue collar guy, whatever. It's good times. We're not at war. It's just regular go to work, come home, and I want to diversify, right? You know what? I'm, I'm making decent money at work. I got a little spare coin in my pocket. I got my tax returns. You know, I got $1,000. I want to go diversify my portfolio. You know, you have stocks and bonds and maybe some real estate or whatever and uh, 401ks and all that good stuff. But you want to also diversify your portfolio with uh, precious metals, gold and silver. It's good times, you know. So I think those guys, uh, those guys, you got $1,000, you got $10,000, whatever, just sitting around in a bank, right? You take some of that money out, take $1,000 out, you go to the bank. I think those guys should be buying, first off, these, these uh, silver rounds, right? Uh, because the premium is really low, meaning that spot prices, say it's $24 for an ounce of silver, and the premium is 24 25 26 27 $3 on top of spot. So the, the store selling it to you makes a little bit of profit, right? So there's a premium, right? Uh, the premium is low on these these generic silver rounds. So I think that's a good investment, right? And you can get a bunch of them, you know, $10,000 worth of this stuff laying around. You can sit on it. Um, the world goes up, goes down, whatever. Markets go up and go down. Sit on it for 10 years. Boom, silver is now worth $40 an ounce, $50 an ounce, whatever the case may be. Then you take your silver coins and you can go cash them out if you want to go buy a house or a truck or a side-by-side -side or whatever. Buy some real estate or whatever. Reinvest it into something else. But these, are, I think, are, I think are a, a good investment for the good times investor, right? Also, um, even better would be like the U.S. Uh, Morgan silver dollar. It's minted U.S. coin by the U.S. Mint, right? So there's a little bit of security in the fact that, hey, that's an American coin and it's a silver ounce stamped by an American mint, right? So that's a little extra security, right? The premium's higher on that. I think there's like above $5 on top of spot for those, which is crazy because uh, I remember when... Um, like say Canadian maple leaves were $3 premium above spot. And people were like, you're crazy to spend, you know, $3 over spot. That's crazy, man. You guys are dumb. You should buy the silver rounds. It's only a dollar over spot. That's where the money is. Now look what, at us at 2023. Um, gold, uh, silver maple leaf is five, six, seven dollars over spot. Who's smart, right? Who was the smart one back then, right? So, uh, U.S. Morgan's silver dollars, 
Canadian maple leaves, um, UK Britannias, uh, Australian um, kangaroos or kookaburras. Those four are the ones that I like that I'll probably actually buy here in a minute um, with my tax return money and a little bit of my YouTube money, whatever I have left. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm probably going to buy some of those too just for fun, right? But I still think the, the big money maker is going to be in the rounds because... Um, in my opinion, again, I'm not an expert, but if you bought $10,000 of silver rounds, you're going to have a buttload of these laying around. Like I'm talking a lot, $10,000 in just rounds versus buying $10,000 in Morgan silver dollars or Canadian maple leaves. You're probably going to have half the amount because of the premiums, right? The premiums are going to be so expensive that you're only just going to get physically half the silver. But here's the best part. Whoever has more silver wins, really. Whoever has more gold wins. Right? So the fact that you have the, these fancy U.S. Or, or Canadian minted coins is nice, but when it comes time to cash them in, you physically only have half the silver. So the guy who, who invested in these no-name silver rounds, there's still one ounce, he's still going to come out on top because he physically has more silver to, to trade in and get back, right? And uh, there's a guy on YouTube that showed this a phenomenon. He has a spreadsheet that showed this as a fact. Well, uh, I guess it's not a fact, but he showed it um, in a graph, right? So that's my mentality is um, just get more of it. Whether it's fancy and it's limited edition or it's whatever, it's a John Wick special edition one, who cares? Just get the silver so in the future you'll have more of it to trade in and get your money back. That's my opinion. All right. And then the last group. So the last group are the folks that are just like doomsday preppers, you know, bugging out type guys. The, the guy that's like, look, man, I got to get out of town, man. I need to hop in the truck, head a thousand miles north or a thousand miles south. Everything I own is in the back of my truck on all my back. Right. And it's the last of us kind of situation. He wants to take all his wealth with him and just head out, right? He's bugging out. Well, again, let's use the $10,000 thing. So if you had to carry $10,000 of wealth in your pocket, having $10,000 of silver is going to be probably not even possible. It's going to be super heavy because you need a lot of it. It won't even fit in your front pocket. You're going to have to put it probably in a wheelbarrow or luggage or it's just going to be too much silver, $10,000 worth of silver. It's going to be big and bulky. You can't put it in your pockets. That's my point. You can't put it in your pockets. It's too much. It's too big. But you can have $10,000. That's two, four, six, eight. Ten thousand dollars in gold coins. This that would it's, if these were gold. If these were gold coins, that's ten thousand dollars right there. So you could have ten thousand dollars in one pocket and another ten thousand dollars in the other pocket. You can be walking around with twenty thousand dollars of your wealth in your pocket. That's good for the bug out guy, right? Because it's very compact wealth, right? And the best part about that too is you can cash it out immediately, right? So say the world bounces back and we're back to normal. And you have, uh, I don't know, 10000 20000 50000 $100,000 in gold. And you want to flip it into cash right now, like today. You can take that, go to a shop, and they'll give you money right there on the spot for your gold. or your, For your gold, right? Uh, the $50,000, $100,000 worth of gold. Um, if you, you can't really do that with a lot of other things. Like, let's just say real estate, right? Real estate, there's a long, drawn-out process and paperwork and contracts and inspections and all this stuff. It's just not flippable, like uh, just in, literally in a matter of minutes. Um, you can't do that with real estate. Same thing with, uh, I don't know about stocks and bonds and 401ks and all that stuff. Um, but in general, you usually can't get that money out of the, those organizations quickly, like within an hour. I mean... It's just banks don't just give out money like that. They, there's a process where they have to, okay, we'll come back on another day and we'll have everything here for you so you can pick it up. It's just not there, right there on the spot. Whereas this stuff, you can trade $10,000, boom, on the spot and get cash immediately, right? Uh, I've, now, I think, again, I'm not an expert on this, but like if you took a million dollars in gold to someplace and they actually had the million dollars cash to give it to you, 
um, they have to declare all this stuff to the government, right? In, in good times. So um, there is that fact that you will be tracked and you'll be traced and all that stuff if you're uh, getting doing transactions bigger than $10,000. But that's a whole other video, I'm sure. But anyways, that's it, guys. Those are the three types of people that uh, should be buying gold and silver. And those are the three... Those are the types of gold and silver uh, denominations that I think people should be um, buying in general. Like I said, rounds, um, Canadian maple leaves or anything minted by a government and um, gold if you're a bug out kind of guy because it's compact but very valuable. Um, I didn't mention um, bars but because um, I'm not a big fan of bars in general because a lot of times the bars will come in like vacuum sealed containers and then you have to break them open to test them and scrape them and put acid on them to make sure they're not fake i'm just not a fan of bars but i know some guys absolutely love bars right because can you imagine having this this size of a gold bar in your hand and there's a cool factor to that right so i get it uh, again if you need to transfer your wealth to i don't know another country or i don't know where you're going but um Maybe you just have a lot of stuff, and gold bars is where it's at. Not a lot of people can buy gold bars, so that's the problem. If you have a shoebox size, here, let me grab this shoebox here. If you had a gold bar that was the size of a shoebox, who's going to have the money to pay for that, right? Very, very, very few people have that kind of cash laying around to buy a gold bar this big, right? It's just better to have. I think smaller, smaller bars in general. But anyway, that's that's another whole another video. All right, guys, hit that like button to support my channel. I appreciate it. Helps me out a lot. Ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think about stacking silver and gold or precious metals in general. Let me know what you guys think about all this. Is it paranoid? Is it crazy? Is it a good investment? Is it dumb? What do you guys think? All right, guys, take care.